health centers are not only focal points for communities, but often act as centers of innovation. They combine people, processes, and technology in creative ways in their mission to improve accessibility and deliver services to some of the most vulnerable patient populations. Welcome to this edition of the Clinical Works podcast as we celebrate Health Center Week and help to recognize the important work that's being done every day by health centers around the country. Joining us today is Trey Davis, Manager of Business, Clinical Applications, and Support at Sun Life Family Health Center, a federally qualified health center in Casa Grande, Arizona, to highlight the ways in which their organization has used quality measures as a foundation to improve patient outcomes and overall performance. Trey, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me, Adam. Trey, I wanted to ask you, you know, closing care gaps, right? This is something that many organizations see as a chore or even a burden, but you have made this a a focus for your organization. What's been the impact of Sun Life's focus on ensuring care gaps are closed and how does that align with your mission? So with closing care gaps, we are looking at trying to help with the risk associated with patient care. We saw this as an opportunity to create a program within our organization to actually interact with our community and work with the health plans to get them the information they need and close the care gaps and complete things like annual wellness visits, which in in the past were kind of a second thought, if you can use that term. We were more focused on seeing the patient, getting the immediate care that they need, Now we're focused on long-term care for the patient. Now, in a lot of cases, the health plans have incentives in place that allow you to generate revenue that surround, you know, you completing the annual wellness visits and you completing the care gaps. Just with the annual wellness visits and incentives with the health plans, we were able to generate around $1.2 million over the past year. This revenue is there. This revenue has always been there, but we just need to know how to accumulate that revenue. And it's a little cumbersome because there's additional documentation and things that need to be submitted to the health plans and making sure that the patients go and get the testing that they need for such as their uh, cancer screenings and things. Now, also, there's additional incentives that surround star ratings. So these star ratings surround how well you're caring for that patient population. These, These star ratings, you know, can go up to four stars and there's dollars tied to those star ratings. We want to strive to hit those four stars. And in the past, I think we were sitting around maybe at 3.2 with most, most health plans not realizing that there were dollars tied once you reach a certain level of the star rating, depending on the health plan. And they reimburse dollar amounts by the, by the patient panel population that you have that's associated with that health plan. Well, that's certainly a great milestone there, $1.2 million in extra revenue. And, and of course, the increase in your star ratings, like you said, makes a, makes a big difference. Let's talk about how you got to this point and how you plan to reach your goals for next year. What was your strategy and what tools did you put in place to make that a reality? So throughout the organization, we kind of came together as one solid team and looked at what needed to be accomplished. We worked with a lot of the health plans and tried to gather all the information that's needed of what they were requiring to uh, actually meet each need. The system that we have with ECW using our Hilo Insights and using all, all of the actual items that we have involved in the system to bring that together using our population health and seeing how that all can come together and get us the information we need when we have the patient on the phone or the patient in the clinic and how we can get that workflow to work for us to make things a lot easier. Now, trying to meet our HEDIS measures, we were able to have those populate in our population health. So that way, when we're within the progress note, we can see the additional items that are needed to meet those care gaps for each patient. We were also able to use that for uh, patient planning or visit planning prior to the patient coming in by accessing those measures and seeing, okay, well, this patient needs this X, Y, and Z cancer screening. So we were able to plan for that prior to the patient coming in. And that way we know that when the patient comes in, we need to talk, discuss these items with that patient. And having that information readily available at all times whenever we're in the chart is, is a major workflow help. We also were using the uh, Hilo Insights to know what the health plans were seeing. Now, granted, we only have I believe five health plans that are engaged in the Hilo Insights, but we discussed this with the health plans at every meeting, trying to get them to sign up with Hilo Insights. So that way we have one centralized location to view all information that uh, are required for a particular patient. 
All right, Tracy, you've mentioned the Hilo Insights piece, which helps you to collect the information from the payers, messages from them, data from them. We also have the the HEDIS Analytics, of course, that helps you to track and manage the clinical quality measures using your own information. And it's very important that you mentioned there that you, you sounded like you had to give those payers a little bit of a push to try to get involved with the Hilo Insights as well. So good information there. I want to know, Trey, how are you using these tools to make the work easier for provider and staff? So in general, the tools are readily available. You can access some of the tools from the patient hub or on the right, right side of the progress note, you're able to see that information. Now, Hilo Insights is just clicking a button and then you're able to actually view what the health plans are seeing and see how that in- information can correlate. So they may have went and saw another provider somewhere and they may have had a cancer screening with that other provider and the patient doesn't readily have that information available with them. This allows us to see what was done and see what the health plan has captured. And then that way we know that this has already been completed and then we can know what we would need the next steps would be. Having that information available from the right chart panel in real time allows us to be able to actually just when the patient is in clinic, click and see what, what, it's, what is needed. That actually saves us time not having to log into a separate system and pull that information down. And it, it, it helps eliminate a lot of the extra research that, that's out there just at the click of a button. Trey, now in addition to the Hilo Insights and the HEDIS Analytics, are there any other ECW features or tools that you're using to streamline that visit process? So with the health plans, when you're doing things like a Medicare annual wellness visit, there's a questionnaire that needs to be filled out. We were able to build that questionnaire within ECW and attach it to the actual visit. So the patients are able to fill out their their questionnaire, depending on what the questions are with a yes or no, or if it was a free text, or if you have a drop down built within ECW. And that information is actually able to be imported into the progress note which satisfies the need for that annual wellness visit. Now, having the patient have to fill out a form when they come into the clinic, and then you have to basically manually input that information really takes a long time. But having that readily available to import directly from the portal really saves a lot of time for the patient. Now, what we did, which which was unique, is we have a dedicated care gaps team, which consists of four people. And three days before their appointment, we reach out to the patient verify that they have accessed their portal and try to assist them with filling that form out. The form probably takes about five, five to 10 minutes to fill out. That way, whenever they do come in, we can import that information. Also, each health plan has their own per se form that you have to fill out for their risk assessments. Now, we imported those forms into the, e- the EMR prior to the visit and allow it to be able to be ink edited So the providers can actually fill out those forms right there with the patient instead of having to print that out, fill it out, and have it scanned back in. Once it's there, we can directly send that to the health plan once the visit is completed. You know, that's a great use of some very fundamental features in e-clinical works that you're that you're making use of. Sounds like you're saving a lot of time. And, you know, of course, none of this works without the patients being involved in the process. So what else is Sun Life doing or how else has Sun Life innovated? to engage those patients and provide services for these special populations? So we, we have actually looked at trying to use our telehealth services. We've actually added additional visits for our hypertension program. We use this care gaps team to help increase our, hyper, our hypertensive program where we provide blood pressure monitors that integrate with our Hilo app. And we're actually able to import that data also. And then they're able to follow up with our clin pharmacists instead of having to come into the office. So we use the televisits for that. We're also with the annual wellness visits, completing those annual wellness visits with, with telehealth services also. So we are moving towards our model of trying to have a provider available if the patient is available right now, getting them connected with a provider via telehealth to complete their annual wellness visit. So that actually is a convenience for the patient and helps us reach the goals that we have set in place. One area that we can look at is how we've increased those annual wellness visits. We've pretty much moved from, I believe in 2019, I think we only completed around, I believe it was like 700 televisits. 2020 was around 900 and probably 30 televisits. And at the last check, I believe it was like for 2021, we were we had completed 2,600 televisits. And so you can see at the end of 2020 is when we started putting that care gaps team together. So in 2021, you can actually see the results of that team working together to meet those needs for those patients. 
Yeah, there's a, a tripling of the the volume that you had from the year before. I'd say that was uh, pretty substantial. Well, it sounds like you are really getting the, the the value out of all of this technology at your disposal. We're we're so glad to hear the the, the incredible accomplishments that you've been able to make, and we really hope to be able to maybe talk with you again and and find out what you're able to do in the future with uh, with some of these additional tools. Trey, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us here today and uh, and to share your insights with us. All right, thank you, Adam. Now, if you'd like to learn more about any of the topics that we discussed here in today's episode, including Hilo Insights, HEDIS Analytics, or any of the messenger tools or other features that we discussed, you can visit my.eclinicalworks.com or speak with your strategic account manager. And don't forget to check out our other eClinical Works podcast episodes on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, and my.eclinicalworks.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you find the information valuable. For the Clinical Works podcast, I'm Adam Salati, and thanks for watching.